was in bed for six months and I was unable to vote. NBC News has learned that the president has narrowed his Supreme Court search down to three contenders. What are you looking for in the next Supreme Court justice? Um, look, I'm not uh, looking for anything in particular, somebody that will uphold the Constitution. Of course, I think that's super important. I don't, I don't think that we should stress out until he makes a pick, and then we can talk about the different you know, qualifications. But I think that right now there's mass hysteria over the fact that he gets to pick somebody in the same way that uh, Obama got to pick two people. I don't understand whatever. Well, I think a lot saying. of folks are, are annoyed by the third person that the president did not get to pick, Merrick Garland, who didn't get a hearing. But, but going he, back... He did get two picks. Yeah, well, yes, okay, that is, so. that, that's correct. Um, <laughs> Litmus test, Roe v. Wade, we were just talking about, uh, about that a few minutes ago. Do you think there should be a litmus test with regards to Roe v. Wade? For no, a, I think that even the fact that we are discussing Roe v. Wade is a, a typical leftist tactic uh, to get people, it's fear-mongering, to get everybody all upset and up in arms and, and think that something is going to be overturned so that they boycott. Um, we shouldn't be talking about it whatsoever. We should be talking about the qualifications of the person that is going in. We shouldn't and be having a conversation no, about Roe v. Wade. No, I think that the fact because that... Because it's settled law? Or? No, no, we should not be having a conversation about Roe v. Wade before the president makes the pick for SCOTUS. It's a way for the left to fear monger, which is what they always do. They want people to be scared as if somehow how all of their rights are going to be violated because Donald Trump gets a Supreme Court pick, and that's just not true. But it's not just people on the left who are, who are doing this, this fear mongering. There are people who are... No, no, no. <laughs> it definitely I mean, is. I, I, I have friends and talk to lots of people who are, you know, on the left. Or, and there are people who are legitimately concerned about the next Supreme Court justice being able to upend some 45 years of settled law in this country. And you're saying you don't... Name your friends, please. Well, I don't think, I mean... CNN? <laughs> no. Not, well, I think you right. and I both know that wouldn't necessarily be my friend. But, right. I mean, you to say that the entire left or the, the entire right is doing something, I just, I, I don't know... First of all, it can't be accurate. You know that's not accurate. It's that's 100% hyperbole. accurate. It's not, hyperbole is what's going on right now. Hyperbole is this idea that every time Donald Trump some, ha, does something, there's going to be an Armageddon. It's the reason why so many people on the left have grown apathetic toward the Democrats, because you guys, you know, I don't mean to say you guys, I shouldn't you know, insinuate you that you're correction. a part of that, um, but because what we see in the leftist media so much is every single week you're outraged over something else. He gets a Supreme Court pick. You know, you have to move on from that, let him pick somebody, and then we can start to talk about things. But this fear-mongering has to stop completely. Completely. There has to be more rational dialogue and thought here. So there's been no fear mongering on, on other sides of the political spectrum. If you have a point you'd like to make, no, I'm, answer. I'm just saying the, the president from time to time. No, some, I, some I don't think tweets. I do not remember recall while Obama was in office for two terms every single day waking up thinking that the world was going to end to answer your question. I, well, I, I vividly recall being at a number of town hall meetings after Obamacare had, had been launched and, and people showing up with automatic weapons, people claiming that they wanted to take their country back. So, so to say that all of a sudden there's, you know, the, the left is up in arms. I mean, the right was up in arms for a while as well. You would concede... About that, Obamacare, uh, uh, yes, that's all about the president that, in general, about the fact that he wasn't born in this country, that he was a secret Muslim. I mean, there are... There are fringes. Are you suggesting that there have been there has been this much outrage? The outrage that we are seeing towards every single thing that Donald Trump does, that his daughter does, that his family does, was the same thing that we experienced when Obama was in office. I, I can't speak for everyone. That's a question. I'm, I, asked, I'm asking you to objectively say, right, that you think that there was this much outrage when Obama the, was in office. For the two beauty times. about doing what I do for a living is that I get to ask the questions. Right. I don't get. I don't necessarily I have take to that, answer. I'll take the that question. as an answer. No, it's not an answer. <laughs> I think. I think that is one. One. One of the things that a lot of folks who have been up in arms about specifically here Scott Pruitt the EPA administrator you are quite familiar I'm sure with a number of his uh, scandals some alleged some confirmed 15 current investigations as it relates to Scott Pruitt um, spending and management practices I think we've got a partial list we can put up put up on the screen here uh, a partial list of his scandals this is Scott Pruitt of course former uh, attorney general there in Oklahoma and we've tried to condense it to one screen here. And there is this, there continues to be this bizarre story about a trying to secure used mattress as well from a Trump Tower hotel. Do you think that Scott Pruitt should, should remain EPA chief? I think that I should remain focused on things that matter. This is not going to impact midterms. It's not going to impact Trump for support. It's a sidebar and, well, and well, something that has gotten way too much coverage with all of the things that are going on right now in the nation. No, wait a minute. But you can you can appreciate how a president who vowed to drain the swamp might receive some legitimate criticism from journalists and and just absolutely, the citizenry at large absolutely. I can because the guy that, I don't have to add with... to the dialogue I don't have to pretend that this is something that is a pressing issue that we need to discuss 24 hours wall-to-wall -wall coverage on any network and I choose not to I choose to pay attention to the crack that is happening in the Democratic Party and the major shift that is happening and I choose to be at the forefront of it Kenneth Owens there are lots of voices in this country and we like to give all voices an opportunity to be here.